I wonder how messy is the best strategy to go with this AI interpretation, because these shapes are looking very odd. Hi guys, my name is Borodante, and today let's talk about NVIDIA Canvas. This app has been around for quite a while now, but just a few days ago, a new version 1.4 has been released, and it has a really cool new feature, which is particularly interesting for those involved in 3D graphics. And as you can see, this feature is about creating the panoramic image for the environments that you can later use for lighting and reflections in your 3D scene, which is really cool. I find this feature to be like the first one that actually makes this app really useful in the real world, you know? So if we create a new document, we get to choose either we wanna create this uh, default square image as it always was, or we wanna create this panorama. And yeah, for those of you guys who don't know what this app is, it's an AI powered app from Nvidia where you can pretty much paint a realistic, like photorealistic landscape like this using these like color code brushes. Like all of these brushes are pretty much you just paint with this uh, mud color and if i just add it right here we'll see that in this place there will be mud now so ai is interpreting your basic childish brush strokes into making a photorealistic landscape and yeah, these are like the basic things you can do with it. Uh, there's also layers, which are pretty much to save different stages. Like this is the, the way the image looked before. I covered the whole thing with like clear sky here. And in this separate layer, I have just a few tall trees, which is an interesting thing to experiment with. Forest, right? So I can add like a forest right here. And yeah, by the way, it's uh, not super fast, especially Especially when you're working on this panoramic composition. It's a 4K image, so the resolution is very usable for environments for sure. And yeah, also, I'm not sure if this feature was introduced in this version or not, but auto paint by default is on, and that's the way the app always worked before to me. But right now, if you turn it off, you get this render button activated and what it means you can paint around with these uh, basic colors as much as you want without any delays and then you either press this render button or you hit f5 on your keyboard and then ai updates the final results which is uh, in many cases probably a very useful way to approach it i would actually bring this checkbox right here next to the render buttons because uh, it's the kind of thing you want to switch back and forth i think and yeah there's several types like several moods or maybe times of day or maybe places on earth kind of thing in here that you can choose from it will be interpreting these colors with different themes and yeah these are pretty cool and what's also very cool is that it's like eight of them here but also inside there is i think nine variations no ten variations you can go inside of one setup so you get quite a few like literally 80 different versions you can get out of the same masterpiece you have at the top and yeah in many cases if you are in auto painting mode it's cool to work in just image view and fit to screen this way you're directly just painting the photo which is kind of cool so if i would add a little bit of straw right here i'm like like it's uh, gotten a lot slower in the panoramic view in general. So it's not as snappy and fun. Uh, I'm pretty sure this feature will work way better on the RTX 40 series cards, which is probably the whole point of this update from Nvidia to make their cards look useful and all. But yeah, definitely more than usable on my 3080 Ti laptop that is actually running at performance mode and not on turbo so on turbo we might be able to find an even better performance let's see how that goes because i haven't tried yet so i'll add like a good old mountain here well no i think the lag is about the same Wow, that's quite a mountain there. So yeah, it's really cool how it's uh, very faithful to the shape of your brush strokes, which to me, I think is like really cool. You can really pinpoint the shapes you want to see in your landscape. Sometimes it would, you know, finish the shape, 
like if it's like a, a land and underneath there's some sea it would kind of connect the land to the land because it only makes sense that way or something but overall it's like sometimes breaking the laws of logic just to follow your brush strokes and i think it's good enough like not good enough it's arguably better yeah one thing i noticed like when we're talking about creating the actual environment texture first of all it is hdr which you can't really see here but we'll see it later uh, but another thing i can't really seem to have a good way of introducing the sun it's always like not really sunny and right here I turned on right now this layer of mine where I make the sky clean like this right so all of this all these clouds were erased and I get clean sky and I noticed only this last theme or style actually shows the sun in the landscape and I have yet to see if in HDR it has like legit sun brightness but yeah it's funny how this is the only style that actually lets you see the sun and yeah sometimes it looks like this i don't know what kind of deep learning machine learning thing led to <laughs> the sun looking like that but overall i think it's pretty cool result and yeah i'm particularly interested in this um, sunny version because i haven't yet seen it so i'm gonna export this so you go ahead and just press the export button and there are different file formats one of them is exr which is what's of course recommended if you want the high dynamic range like if you want the sun to be as bright as the sun but yeah right here i'll export exr and here let's have a quick look at it in photoshop so yeah you guys can see it's uh, quite a difference from what it looks like in the nvidia preview in the preview it was making sure it showed as much information to us as possible but photoshop is just showing the raw data of this EXR and we can see how very blown out certain details are because of the high dynamic range and we can see that it's actually legit high dynamic range by simply lowering this top brightness and we'll notice that all the details are getting back into the image even the sun is getting there because it's still kind of covered by the clouds we get some cloud details on top of the sun but yeah you can see i tone it down from 255 to like 20 25 which is literally one tenth of brightness which means that the sun was at the very least like 10 times brighter than white in this image so you can kind of understand the amount of brightness packed in the sunspot and what's interesting this spot right here is actually even brighter than the sun which is uh, whatever that's supposed to mean and yeah overall i can see that you know the jumps in brightness are a bit not super logical like this stone why would this particular stone be so bright you know it's kind of arguing with a lot of clouds next to the sun like that's where we get to see the actual details at like 40 which means it's quite a glowing stone but you know for just the environment just some reflections it's definitely good enough and if you have a big problem with this you can just edit it in photoshop just overlay some dark transparent brush strokes on top or something so yeah this is what we're getting on the output of nvidia canvas i don't know what this is about but it looks photorealistic <laughs> And yeah, right now, let's have a look at it in Blender. This is the previous environment I was checking out. And in this case, I was actually using just a sun light source right here that was oriented to make sense with the brightness of the clouds and everything. And yeah, it blends together pretty well, but I really wanted to see what it looks like with the sun actually being in the image. So this third version right here, oh that's very yellow i guess it's because it's like an intense sunset situation i guess i need to rotate this stuff a little bit oh this gradient of the sky is looking very good 
and the reflection like for some kind of car commercial but yeah uh, we just can see it like because of the sun being in the shot it's creating very strong gradient away from the sun the sky is much darker that's why we're getting such a rich looking reflection here and on the floor here we can see kind of like almost a projected shadow from the sun a little bit but of course it's like subtle enough it's not like a sharp specific sun you know but still like it's introducing very realistic complex somewhat directional shadows which are really cool and on top of that you could just add your fake sun or not fake more real than anything but yeah one thing you would need to make sure is that you sort of align it with the photo sun which is honestly i have no idea how to do i guess i do i need to be looking at the sun with my viewport camera and a lot like through through my sun right so there's that sun i look at it like this and then i hit rr to rotate in gimbal mode and i need to make sure that the sun is pointing exactly at my eyeball as much as possible let's say like this is like super close so pretty much perfect alignment and right now presumably we'll just have one sun highlight that's looking just right the brightness of the sun in watts per meter squared is 1.361 is what i looked up online i hope that's a real data by the way another really cool trick i noticed later if you introduce the sun and you just see that it's just not enough brightness to introduce like good strong shadow from the character on the ground or something what you can do is actually in the world shader controls you use nodes and in between the texture and the background shader node you would add the rgb curve and with this thing, you can pretty much curve down all the details that are dark enough while keeping the sun very bright. And after this, all that's left is to increase the overall exposure of your environment to, let's say, 5. And this way you get pretty much like the same environment, but the sun information of brightness will be way, way higher, pretty much five times higher. And that's how you get very sharp shadows from the sun in just the image of the environment without turning on your actual light source of the sun. So yeah, that's how you can sort of increase the dynamic range further to have the actual brightness of the sun. And it's looking pretty dope this way. Maybe a bit too soft, but there's some kind of clouds involved, so it might make sense. Anyway, fun times with the curves. But yeah, this is the kind of environment we're getting. The reflections are looking pretty cool, and you're in full control what exactly is going on in terms of like adding more trees or something. Let's actually go ahead and do just that. Like very tall trees that maybe like just very close to the camera or something. They might introduce very cool looking uh, general appearance of the reflections because in here the sky is like very empty, which is not bad, but you know could look more interesting i wonder how messy or how clean is the best strategy to go with this ai interpretation because these shapes are looking very odd but arguably understandable considering the shape of the brush being just round and trees looking like that are not too hot what about different style variations wow these trees are really <laughs> Like, do I need to draw an actual tree to get a normal looking tree? Do I mix a bush in? I don't know. Will that help? It doesn't seem like it helps. Like, just doesn't look very good as a tree. How do you quickly draw a tree then if you are not an artist? I mean, okay, so you just, uh, you know, go a bit more random about the shape and then you'll get some kind of silhouettes that are have a bit more freedom on the AI part so it gets to show interesting how you are influencing the shape of the sun all kinds of ways by just changing the tree so any disconnected spot will immediately show a piece of tree floating in the air oh my god Th that's some weird stuff now let's see what it looks like here now okay we're getting two suns again because it changed its position so again I'm gonna just look at the sun through my sun and adjust like this i wonder if there's any other way to do it i mean this is a pretty good trick anyway but still feels a bit stupid to do it 
But yeah, you guys can see now we have a bit more interesting reflections, breaking the somewhat boring ideal gradient of the sky into some more interesting details there. On the hat is looking pretty cool. Even though those trees make little sense with their shapes, you gotta really pay attention to what they are to have a problem with that. And of course, it, it takes like a very metallic perfectly glossy material to see the details so well but of course this environment will be very useful with uh, noticeably more rough materials and all but that's just material science and yeah the the shadow like the nice subtle spots of realistic imperfect kind of distribution of the ambient occlusion look very good i think it's pretty cool stuff and um one last thing i'm not sure about you know what kind of images this ai model or whatever deep learning machine learning model was trained on but at the very least uh, of course it's just photos so i don't know i think nvidia knows better than using someone's copyrighted <laughs> content or whatever without consent what i'm trying to say is it's pretty safe to use and you get to have any kind of environment maps for your 3d scenes that you want with a pretty detailed control of it so that's really cool so just wanted to share with you guys this new update from nvidia canvas again if you're new to this the point of this app is that it's free but you have to have an rtx graphics card to be able to open it at all it uses these ai tensor cores inside of rtx graphics cards to uh, generate all this locally on your machine but yeah if you happen to have one of those rtx cards you get to generate pretty cool environments very fast of quite high resolution which is probably the most impressive part like 4k almost real-time painting dope stuff so let me guys know what you think i think this is really cool just wanted to share the cool news about creating your own environments and for now this is it thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye